August 1883 through to the 23rd of May 1966, the experimental Whispage to Upwell tram provided a goods and passenger service for businessmen and local inhabitants. The route covered a distance of just under six miles, travelling adjacent to the highway from Whispage to Upwell. The tram called at the depots of Elm, Boyce's Bridge, Outwell Basin and Outwell Village and it terminated at the Upwell Depot at its southernmost end at what is now known as Townley Close, the location of the Upwell Health Centre. In the beginning the tram would stop by request to pick up passengers. To commemorate the tramway, plans are being drawn up for bespoke installations of memorials along the entire route of the tramway. The plans are to position these at Wisbridge, Elmbridge, Boysesbridge, Emnith, Outwell and Upwell depots. Following the successful completion of the memorial project, Phase 1 in July 2016 at the old Outwell tram yard, enthusiasts and volunteers have successfully completed Phase 2 at the Upwell terminus at Townley Close. Funding was not easy, the project stalled with a significant delay. Thanks to the late Ted Harper and his significant financial contribution, the project was restarted. Under the supervision of local historian Bill Smith, and with support from the Well Creek Trust and local engineering company SDM Fabrication, Phase 2 has been completed. Local businessman Richard Melton volunteered to assemble the period artefacts which had been sourced by Bill Smith and his Phase 1 team. The Phase 2 project was built by Richard's staff at its engineering company SDM Fabrication in March. Richard also arranged and organised the Phase 2 delivery and installation. The unveiling of the memorial outside the health centre at Townley Close took place on Saturday the 27th of July 2019. A lot of hard work had to be undertaken from the concept drawings to the sourcing of materials, including additional artefacts from the tram line, and then putting them together to produce firstly Phase 1 at Oakwell and now Phase 2 at Upwell. Materials were collected by SDM Fabrication and after cleaning, powder coating, welding and painting, the memorial was completed. Mary Williamson, whose husband Bill was the manager of Coote and Warren Limited, cool merchants whose depot was in Upwell until 1974, unveiled the Phase 2 memento. We're going to ask Mary to pull this off and let you all have a look at what Hope is going to, what Hope's going to be here for many, many, many years. So Mary, if you'd like to pull the bits off. Richard Melton, the Managing Director of SDM Fabrications, and Kimberly Smith, the Project Manager, were also in attendance. Before the unveiling ceremony, arrangements were made to set up an exhibition at St Peter's Church Upwell, in order that those attending the ceremony could partake of refreshments and also view the vast collection of photographs and other memorabilia relating to the tram line. Additional items were provided by Colin Bedford, the owner of March Cycle Museum, and also Mark Thatcher, who lives in the old Emnath Vicarage, the former home of the Reverend Audrey. Someone who does recall much about the tram line is Mary Williamson. She unveiled the memorial. She has fond memories of the tram line and remembers when and how it was used. I worked in the tram yard for the, a firm of coal merchants called Coot and Warren, later to be Charrington Solid Fool. The, the tram was for bringing coal down from Wisbeach down to Otwell Depot, you see. The tram was very important to the fruit growers and the farmers, everybody used the Upwell tram. That used to take fruit, potatoes, all sorts of things, you know. There was Tim the shunter, and I used to, my heart used to be in my mouth every time he coupled the trucks up in case anything happened and he got squashed. But he never did, he managed to do that. And then there was a Mr. South, the tram driver, and a Mr. Potts, I knew them. 
When I think back, that was some of the happiest days of my life, because I always wanted to work with my husband, and my wish was granted, and I worked with him until he died 12 years ago. So he actually did 42 years for the coal firm, and I did 32. And we, we, I retired when I was 62, and he retired when he was 63. So uh, that's the story of my husband and I. And my daughter, who's here today, she even had driven, has, has driven that tram. Myself, as a child, of course, the tram yard was my playground. Um, the coal heaps and watching the tram come in and seeing everything loaded onto the tram. And of course, I used to help Dad to, uh, as we used to call it, chuck the trucks out which meant we had to empty the coal from the trucks into the yard. And although I was very small, he had a shovel and I had a small dustbin, and we did that in the evenings. The tram used to come into the coal yard once a day and, uh, and bring the coal. I, I believe it ran from Upwell to Wisbeach probably twice a day. It used to frighten me to death, actually, the noise it made. One uh, incident I remember, the, uh, the tram people left one of the workmen's sort of a push me pull you, I don't know what the proper name was for, when uh, they used to use it when they repaired the line. Um, they left it there for about six weeks and of course my friends and myself and the old dog, we would get on that every evening and, uh, and, and go as far as we could on this thing and then come back again. My father um, took photographs on the last day and it's his photograph of uh, John Francis shutting the gate for the last time and I can remember we were all there and waved the tram off. Quite a sad day really. One of the funniest memories is that uh, I and a group of other lads, we decided to borrow uh, one of those uh, maintenance buggies, you know, the ones with the old crank handles. Uh, we borrowed it and we took it for a little ride and we took it uh, through the basin tram yard and uh, we was pursued by the local policeman. Uh, we decided to jump off this buggy and uh, or I think they called it bogey uh, and run across the fields and which left the policeman stranded with his bike and he went chasing after the buggy which kept going along the track. Now that stories being in uh, si some local books but uh, not many people knew who the boys were. It was indeed used for uh, passenger transport. Uh, I think uh, the passenger service ceased in uh, 1927. Uh, there is still a carriage at North Norfolk Railway at Sheringham uh, been restored that you can see. I think that one of those carriages, I'm not sure that, I don't think that's the actual one that uh, featured in the Titfield Thunderbolt film in the 50s. There weren't no gates at the thing. It used to be the guard used to go out and stop the traffic. Back in the 50s, there weren't a lot of traffic, so it didn't matter, really matter too much. It wasn't a fast thing, no. It probably used to pick up a bit of um, speed when it was on a straight run whereas when it got through the station in Outwell it then used to go up to the thing we went to back of Outwell Secondary Modern School and it, as I remember I used to trundle there through there quite fast. Sports days and things like that and it was cross country we used to go along the train lines and it used to have to be worked out whereas when the train come along we weren't allowed to run along that train line, but um, it was worked through the school that um, we only done it when the train weren't come along here, go up well. I used to go along Saturday mornings and pick up my straw for my chickens, which was a regular occurrence. Every Saturday I'd be up there and getting my straw and it was a thing, part of our life. And it was an enjoyable time, whereas we, you know, you could go up to the station there and see them doing all the work in the st and it wasn't a matter of um, get out the station yard because, uh, yeah, a lot of youngsters were in there then. Well, I think there's lots of books been written about and, and I think most of the books do refer to the fact that uh, it's the inspiration 
for these, for Thomas the Tank. Most of the authors uh, have mentioned it in their books. Well, a funny little tale on that is that in the Reverend Audrey's diaries, he mentions about uh, encountering a most disagreeable young boy who uh, was the son of the porter. Well, that disagreeable young boy I spoke to a, a couple of years ago and uh, asked him if the story was true and he said yes I was perfectly aware of what the Reverend Audrey thought of me. The boy's name is Gordon Chapman and one of the characters in the uh, Thomas's books is Gordon who's a very naughty mischievous sort of tram train. The, when the diesel started uh, that uh, gave Audrey a chance to uh, use uh, another character uh, which he called Mavis, uh, Diesel Tram. That's Mavis. So you had uh, the, car the railway carriage was Henrietta, uh, the Diesel Tram was uh, Mavis and uh, the Steam Tram was Toby. The Thomas the Tank Engine, I think the story, well I've enjoyed them, I've enjoyed reading to my grandchildren, my children and my grandchildren. And they're such wonderful stories and if um, the public can recognise where the actual basis of the story comes from, I think it brings it more to life. It's just good to see that people enjoy remembering about the past and even learning about the past. I understand you've even had um, young people looking into the history such as scouts and, and um, other groups and, and it's just so important for people to know um, all about the past and how their village was formed. Now for phase three. This is well underway with support from the Well Creek Trust. Bespoke installations are planned for various points along the route of the tram line from Wisbech to Oakwell. Well, it involves other councils now. It's involving Wisbech Town Council, Elm Council, Parish Council, Emmeth Parish Council, and of course, Outwell Parish Council. So we need to talk to these guys. We need to get all the legal side dealt with it, which is sometimes difficult. Uh, we need planner permission. Uh, we uh, need to get funding, uh, so there's a lot, a lot to do.